Hi everyone, and welcome to today's lesson. Um, this is going to be a lesson that covers uh, gesture drawing, specifically uh, figure gestures. And it follows on from last week's lesson which introduced basic line drawing. Um, so we're actually going to be looking at how we can make use of the, the lines that we, we learnt about last week, um, which were straight lines, C curves and S curves. Um, basically, um, just following on from what I spoke about um, last week, gesture lines describe the movement and feeling of a figure. So they're a quick way to capture the essence of a pose without focusing on the details of the specific contour, um, the outline of the figure, or specific shadow shapes within the figure. Um, you're just looking for the kind of the overall motion or um, sense of the shape that the figure creates. So it's quite an abstract thing. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be going through how you can kind of look for um, gestures in figures, how you can then draw them effectively, and once you've drawn them, how you can break them down into more natural poses or into something more naturalistic in the pose. Um, so we're going to begin by doing some limited gestures, then do some full gestures, and then do a little bit of articulation. Um, I'm going to be doing it using this set of uh, figure drawings. So on the top you'll see the original figure drawings in, with regular contrast. And then at the bottom um, you'll see a kind of fainter version of the figures, which hopefully should be visible on your screen. Um, and I'm going to, it's basically a tracing exercise, so it's an exercise I'll then get you guys to do uh, this week, where you'll print out, I've got the same set of uh, figures uh, uploaded on the OCAD website. Um, I'll also put it on the blog and you'll be able to print them off or you can find your own figures and do the same thing. Basically you just reduce the contrast um, in the, the original image so that it's possible to trace over. Alternatively you could find figures in books if you've got some art books or if you want to print out darker images and put some tracing paper over the top. Um, either way is completely fine. The idea behind it is that if you're not yet particularly familiar with um, working from the figure, it can be a bit sort of daunting learning about different proportions or the ability to measure proportions um, and sort of get something that looks nice proportionally um, and with a good gesture without any experience whatsoever can be pretty tricky. So this basically allows you to start looking at overall shapes and gestures of figures which is an important early stage in the drawing without having to worry about getting your proportions right. Um, so I'll be going into how you can break down a figure into um, the kind of the most dominant important lines um, today. Uh, so I'm just using wherever it's gone, my pencil somewhere. I'm just going to be using a um, regular, fairly regular pencil. It's a little clutch. Um, I won't be using an eraser because it's just going to be the idea behind this is that you work quite quickly. Um, don't have to worry too much about correcting anything. And I've also got a sanding block in case I need to sharpen. This is all just printed on regular cheap cartridge paper. Um, it's really not, none of this will be anything you'll use as a kind of finished piece obviously as you're, you're just tracing some a selection of classical drawings. There's a mixture of sort of 19th century drawings and some more recent ones. Um, if you search 19th century figure drawings you'll get a lot of good examples of um, some very sort of competent figure drawing that was done in academies back then. Um, so if you're interested in learning fairly traditional figure drawing, um, which I would recommend for anyone, um, even just as a basis, <coughs> to move on and develop their own work, it's good to kind of get reasonably competent with um, traditional methods. Um, but yeah, if you search 19th century figure drawing or if you search Russian academic drawing, um, you'll get a good selection of figures. Um, to work from or to use as, as a guideline. Some of them have nice things like this is a, I can't remember who this is by, I think this might be a Loomis, a guy called Andrew Loomis, one of his drawings. You can see he's already sort of looking at gesture, there's some sort of suggestions that he was messing around with it with different versions of the limbs. Uh, this drawing here which is more modern, or like more of a contemporary figure drawing, has a, has a gesture to the right of it. Uh, it's got a skeleton as well for structure. This one again has a skeleton, um, and there's a few. Uh, there's like a little construction for the knee there. 
but you'll find that some of them have some some good sort of hints towards um, how you might go about starting a drawing. They'll be in various stages of being finished or unfinished. Um, yeah, so the first thing you need to do is you want to look for um, basically the, the simplest form of the figure that you possibly can. Um, some figures will be easier than others. Um, looking at this, there's a pretty obvious gesture going on um, in this one, this very kind of obvious sweeping C curve. So if I was to kind of note that down um, in the, the traced version of it, you'll see there's a kind of sweeping C curve on that side and another sweep on this side. And that pretty much captures the, the general flow of that figure. So I can kind of block the entire figure in within these two uh, specific points. So if I darken it, you'll see it emerge. Now, there are these sort of counter lines that flow. So if I block in the top of the shoulder um, and say the bottom of the thigh just here, you can then see that the top of the thigh and the figure fits into this particular shape and everything else kind of flows off it. But generally that's a kind of an abstract shape which captures that particular figure. Likewise, if I was to take, let me see, say this figure here, you'll see there's this sort of sweep down the back of the arm from the head, um, which if carried on can make a fairly even C curve, um, bound on the other side by another C curve. which flows down like that. So it's a similar, moderately similar composition to this one in that it's got two, um, in this case, um, converging uh, parallel curves. This one is not converging, they're sort of just perfectly parallel. Um, obviously this isn't exactly parallel and they converge, but it makes this sort of curved triangle um, if I was to block in the bottom of the feet. Pretty much the entire figure is captured within those three lines. Um, similarly, if I was to block in the bottom of the feet or angle across the top of the lines. This shape here contains the entirety of that figure. Um, and they're quite pretty simple ones. Uh, if I was to go now to this figure here, it's potentially more of a C, an S-curve, <clears throat> kind of an inverse S-curve, but a similar thing is going on. So from the head get a curve back um, that occurs on both sides of the body and then across that is this fairly straight line you can see flows where he's holding that little uh, piece of wood so I'm just gonna re-emphasize those so they show up well on the camera So in all these instances, um, you can see there's sort of four lines used to block in the outside edge of this. I've got three lines to roughly capture this figure, three lines to capture this figure. This is what we're looking for. So the ability to simplify a figure using as few lines as possible. Um, but in doing so, I essentially capture the overall flow of that figure. What doing this allows me to do is, these are already completed drawings, but if I was working from life and a figure was in this pose, um, you will find that probably most of the time um, the limbs and the head won't exactly line up so that you get these kind of nice um, sort of designed curves within the figure. But you can create um, a gesture um, from what you're given in, in, in real life. So even though that might not exactly add up, if I was to begin my drawing with these sweeped curves, I can make sure that when I start to kind of measure the proportions of the figure, I can adjust everything so it does fit within those shapes. I can also begin to exaggerate it, so if I wanted an even more exaggerated sort of curve, I could bend his back more, bend his head forward. It changes the feeling and the amount of kind of potential energy that's contained in the figure.
you remember last week in basic line drawing, I talked a lot about potential energy within lines. So all of these lines kind of contain a potential energy. Um, these two have a bit more... This one is almost being sort of triangular. It's got a kind of solidity to it, so his feet are planted kind of symmetrically. There's a lot of kind of intersecting triangles within it, so it becomes quite a strong pose with a slight kind of set of... a slight sense of tension through these C curves. <clears throat> this pose, on the other hand, is both strong and full of a lot of potential energy, so it's got these straight lines that cut across the two curves. But the two curves are quite severe, so you kind of feel like the body might spring up at any moment. Um, whereas this this S-curve based figure, while kind of uh, having a sort of flowing energy, it doesn't feel like he's necessarily going to do anything. His body sort of sunk into this pose uh, comfortably and the, the two sort of echoing curves balance each other out, um, create a fairly sort of inactive pose. Um, so if you look at all of them, you would look at this pose and say it's fairly sort of it's sort of in repose or it's a fairly calm pose, fairly calm pose, sort of calm but quite strong, uh, quite blocky. Um, this one's slightly slightly calm but the, the jutting elbow kind of creates a contrast to the straightness of the figure. This one's very calm. Uh, this one, as I said, has a lot of action. <coughs> this is a very sort of um, static pose. This has a bit more motion to it, even though the figure's sitting down. So there's a sense he might sit up, or his legs have kind of unbalanced weight, and there's a bit of weight on his arm. And then these two uh, have a bit more motion, and particularly this one, um, the Loomis, um, obviously feels like she's flowing through the air or something like that, and all the various sort of undulating curves within the figure um, reinforce that sense of movement. Um, this one's a bit more static, but still has that sort of flowing lines, or those sorts of flowing lines going on. Um, so I'm just going to go through um, and just create a sort of an initial set of three lines, three or four lines for each of these figures, um, and then we'll work from there. But I'll be following the same principles that I did um, for those initial ones. So if I was to pick this figure, I might go and find that sort of back curve and then another curve at the front of the figure. <clears throat> this one... Might look at this shoulder. And then this arm that juts back in. And then opposing that as a sort of very soft S-curve. Um, and then another, maybe another C curve, so we've got one, two, three, four lines there. Um, this figure is very light, but again, we might look at a C curve running that way. Probably a straight line blocking out there. Another straight line here. And then another S curve. If I was to pick this figure, I might go across his shoulders and then just put two straight lines that drop down. This guy's a little bit more complicated, he's got quite a lot of limbs. Um, so you'd probably have to get a curve that kind of combines the head dropping down to the hand on that side. Maybe another that carries the head down into the the elbow. Maybe a straight line following that beam because it kind of connects, obviously connects the hand to the foot. Um, and then possibly this one you might go for that it's difficult to capture everything you might go for, end up with one, two, three, four, five lines on that one. Um, obviously there's a reasonable amount of flexibility with anything to do with art. Um, some of them will just kind of come out quite easily, particularly if they're just a single sweep in the figure, like these ones. Um, but if you've got a lot of limbs moving in different directions, you'll find that to kind of capture everything that's going on, you'll require more lines. <coughs> 
mean, I might even go for another kind of parallel C curve in that leg. And then this one. This one I would probably try to capture with a similar set of C curves as some of the other drawings have. Um, the difference being you then have these arms as well kind of jutting out of it. They might not be necessary. The primary thing with this is that big C curve as it bends. Um, and finally, again, I'd probably, because the arms kind of jut separately, um, I would probably go for those and then two C curves. So that's kind of working pretty quickly through them and just kind of picking out a different sort of general shape for each gesture. Um, there are different ways that you can go about creating gestures. So each of these, there would be alternatives. Some of them are probably more kind of easy to read as a gesture than others. This one's certainly got these very dominant curves uh, running through it. This one's pretty much definitely a triangle of some form. Whether you make it curvy or straight probably depends on preference. I've gone for curves mostly with these ones just to kind of look at the energy. We're going to be developing them into slightly more articulated uh, forms in a moment. <clears throat> But yeah, you can, you can do them differently, so you could take the same set of drawings and you could create slightly different gestures. The important thing is we're, we're just using those basic lines, so a C-curve, S-curve, or a straight line. Mostly C-curves and S-curves I recommend initially. Um, and then we're just using, say, three, four, five lines to try to capture as much of the figure as possible. We're going to move on from that and develop things, but that's just our, the beginning of our drawing. So if you imagined you were working from life, and you had a one minute pose or a 30 second pose, which is quite common these days at life drawing classes, um, you'll find it, it useful to be able to kind of quickly create these sorts of gestures. Gesture drawing has different, sometimes has different meanings. I'm just going to brighten that. Um, to me, it's about the flow of the, the figure. Some people talk about gestures exclusively for quick little drawings, but I, I feel that gestures are important for any figure drawing, regardless of how long you spend on it. And pretty much any any composition at all actually. I'm just gonna turn my computer on and check I covered everything. <clears throat> yeah that's pretty much it for these basic um, basic gestures. So these sort of basic or limited gestures we're just working with a bounding box, um, obviously a box is a general term, but a kind of bounding shape, so a shape that roughly encapsulates the outside boundaries of the figure, excluding some limbs or bits and pieces that jut out, but generally something that captures the overall proportion and, and feeling of the image. So if you wanted to, you want to obviously build proportions accurately in any kind of uh, naturalistic drawing at the same time as you introduce these gestures you can combine your initial measurements with your gesture drawing so you could figure out the overall width of this figure compared to height while you're putting in these sweeping curves um, either by eye or by measuring but generally you want to try to make it so that as you create your drawing um, imagine that the these tracings don't exist you you would just create this in a kind of blank space on the paper um, and then you start to fill the figure in inside that shape and eventually you could erase it or lose it or leave it if you like it depends on the kind of style of the drawing that you're doing um, so I'm now going to look at developing these into more sophisticated uh, drawings so essentially continuing the gesture into specific sections of the figure um, so this is the overall gesture of the pose but each limb or each part of the body or prop has a gesture of its own. Um, so you can go to any of them really, but basically it's a bit simpler than those initial gestures because they're a bit more abstracted, but if we're looking at the gesture of each aspect of each figure, so the limbs or the body, um, you start to look at the legs, the arms, the torso. The head will tend to be a sort of box 
boxy shape that sits on top of everything else, maybe a, depending on the shape of it, more of a circle or an oval. Um, and I'm just going to go through, there are sort of typical features of different limbs in terms of the way they curve. Um, if I go to this one first, uh, I'll do this one. Maybe this one actually. You'll generally get a curving um, outwards towards the tricep um, in an arm. So the upper arm will tend to curve kind of out to the back of itself. So in this figure, um, it's very subtle, but there's a definite kind of curve that way um, with that arm. Equally, this arm curves this way. Um, so you see it up here, there's a definite sweep. And if you have a look at these images in the accompanying documents, you'll see the sweep a bit more clearly. <coughs> So it happens for this figure as well. There's a curve there in that upper arm. And an even probably more exaggerated curve here for the other upper arm. Um, where else? This one. So this guy's arm, um, even though a bit more muscular, it's got a bit more sort of specific articulation. There's a definite Definitely two C curves um, on that arm. Even this foreshortened one curves in the same direction um, up there. If we go this one, it's very subtle. It's another curve. And that arm. This guy is pretty straight actually, but you could for the sake of. Uh, consistency make it a slight curve as well um, this guy's definitely got a sweep in his arm going from his armpit down to there that's about the top of his shoulder um, this arm also you can see a pretty obvious curve uh, up here and do we have any left these two this guy again is actually pretty straight Sometimes when you look at the limb straight on, it's not quite as exaggerated. This one, though, this arm um, is curved. And finally, this guy. Again, this one's quite straight, but there is a, a curve on both sides. That's kind of tucked into his torso as well, so it's not quite as apparent with that foot. I think that's... That's all the arms. Ah, this one's left. So again, curving back out. Curving back out. Um, that pretty much, so it's every single arm that we've got there um, demonstrating sweeping curves. So all of them are C curves. Um, <coughs> I'd never recommend using S curves for arms. So even if you get in an arm, I don't know if there's an example of it here, but even if you get an instance where you feel like maybe you could turn an arm into an S-curve going from the um, shoulder down to the hand, there might be some... I mean, it never really happens, actually, but if you ever thought that that was the case, it, it pretty much always won't be. The arms are always two sets of C-curves. Um, so we've looked at the upper arm, but equally the bottom arm will also sweep in the same fashion, so it kind of go out from the elbow um, and back in to the wrist. So you see it there, um, you see it in this one, you can subtly see it here, again this one's quite straight but it's there, there's a definite curve on this one, so you get this kind of curve, curve out, um, or sort of back in and then out and back in, they always curve the same way. Um, the legs are the opposite, so the legs tend to curve, um, say, forwards. Um, hopefully this makes sense. They're essentially forwards, like towards the front of the thigh, they bend out, and then at the calf, they bend back the opposite direction. Again, don't make them a C-curve. You want them to stay distinct um, sets of lines. <coughs> if you do make them a C-curve, you'll find your drawings start to look all wobbly because they... Um, you just wouldn't, 
with the knee as a locking joint, um, quite an articulated locking joint, it's always pretty much always blocky. So it's one of those parts of the body, even in quite heavy figures, you'll still have the knee as a fairly solid portion of the body that's always kind of locked in some kind of position and create, creates two counter curves that don't connect to one another. The same thing happens with the elbow, um, but generally it's hard to find a perfect sweep of the arm. Um, <coughs> so you'll pretty much always be forced into articulating it. Um, so I'll do the same now. I'll quickly go through all the forearms. So this one pretty much carries on the curve of the upper arm, <coughs> but there is a slight kind of jutting out around the elbow, as I say. You always get a sense of the joint where any of the joints occur. Um, so they generally kind of create a stutter in the line um, or kind of a, a staccato point within the line. They're always sort of more evidently bony. So where um, the muscles obviously are, are softer looking, they're not, not necessarily like um, fat, but they're, they have a softness to them or a roundness. Um, the bits of the figure where the bone juts out. So here you can see around the collarbone on this figure, around the knees or the elbows, they're always harsher <coughs> sections of the drawing. So they'll ha have harsher, um, harsher value transitions. Um, and generally the lines, like the articulation lines would be a lot more um, angular. And that's good. It creates a sense of, you get a feeling of the, the kind of skeletal structure of the figure below. Um, below the, the softer top the sort of forms in the top of the figure, um, which gives it a, a nice kind of sense of solidity or gravity um, in the drawing. So yeah, I'll just quickly go through, find all these different forearms. Oh, I never actually did this guy, did I? His arm does sweep the same way. Um, get the head forearms. So this is as quickly as you can create a figure drawing. Um, <clears throat> if you get really good with your measurement, you'd be able to do this um, by eye can't quite say I'm probably that efficient yet that I could perfectly draw out a, a curved gesture figure um, just by eye. Um, but you definitely get progressively better at the more that you draw. Um, the advantage of using these gestures is you're not sort of having to measure each little directional change. You're able to just kind of try to generalize what you're drawing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's all their arms, gestures of their arms blocked in. So you can see all of them are just sets of C curves. Um, just gonna... As I say, the, <coughs> the legs are also made up of two sets of C curves, but they oppose each other. So if we go through now, do the same thing. Um, if we take work from sort of left to right, you'll see this, this thigh bends out, um, as does this one. So they bend in the same direction. Um, it can be a little tricky sometimes to figure out where the bum meets the thigh, but usually you'll get this kind of some sort of high point, even on a round bum, where you can you can point your curve or place your curve. Um, this guy's got slightly it's a slightly complicated complicated uh, curve on this one because if you actually follow look at the contour, there's a definite C curve bending up this way which you do actually get in quite thin figures. You get a kind of concavity um, where the muscle isn't bulging as much as it normally would. So on this guy, it's sort of obviously definitely bulging, or even on this figure from this angle. Um, this guy from a different angle would have a more curved leg, so this back leg curves pretty evidently um, from the high point of the hip. Um, but it's a bit less clear <coughs> on this leg. So you could, um, it's a bit of a an aberration, but you could make that a curve like this. It doesn't quite feel right 
um, I would probably recommend if you're going to do anything, just make them straight and then add those articula articulations in later as you're developing the knees. Um, again, this guy, just because it's front on, you don't get quite a sense of the curve, so I'd maybe make it straight. This leg being more side on has a more apparent curve. Um, this one from behind is pretty works pretty well. So she kind of curves that way and that leg. This leg, another curve back. You will find with legs it can be a little bit tricky until you start to get the specific articulations in, trying to pick those curves. Um, it's almost more of an S-curve really, that shape there. This guy's, even though he's quite bony, the positioning of his leg means the curve works pretty well. Uh, that's more just a knee. So we drop back down to here. As I was saying, this this one's pretty obvious. Um, his thigh there. This one I'd probably do straight again, just because it's directly from behind. This guy's pretty straight as well, being front on. Maybe a slight curve like that. Those ones work quite well in that figure. <clears throat> so we've got our thighs all locked in now as a gesture. Um, now, as I say, usually, depending on the articulation and exactly what position you're looking at the, the lower leg, you'll usually get a, a reverse curve or, or kind of an inverted C curve from the top of the body. So if I have a look at this one, it's quite a, an obvious example. It's mainly because you get a sort of, um, there's a pretty much always a curving inward from the, the knee that juts out into the shin bone um, down to the foot. Um, so it kind of curves inwards there and then obviously the calf muscle um, always bulges out um, to a greater or lesser degree in every figure. So that at the back of the leg pretty much always has some kind of, um, some kind of curve from, from that. So again, depending on how, how you're looking at the figure, it might be quite straight, um, the amount of curve you're getting in the front of the leg, but you'll always get some sort of, some sort of curve uh, in the back. In this instance, the positioning of the leg means you kind of see the bulging out of the calf um, from in front, which kind of blocks the sense of gesture. So. In that instance, you might just immediately go to a, a construction, um, sort of construction lines, which are sort of shorter, straighter lines um, to find exactly what's going on. Um, if we find, go look for some more obvious curves, there's this one, this one here, with both, both legs having pretty obvious curves. Uh, this figure's got a pretty definite curve. You'll see it even more apparently in, or apparent in these little gestures that he's done next to it. And she's, this one's got a definite curve as we looked at earlier. And both legs. This guy again, he pretty much always conforms to the rules. Fortunately, obviously all, I'll say certain things and then I'll find it. examples where they just don't apply. But it's just a, a general rule of thumb when you're looking at gestures is to, to bear in mind that these curves tend to tend to be the case. Um, but you'll get little kind of odd situations depending on how the how you're looking at the figure, uh, what it ang what its angle is towards you. Left. Um, you'll also tend to get a tapering towards the ankle uh, and also the forearm. Going back to the before I'm and the upper arm, actually, you'll you'll get a kind of it'll be blockier at the top of the arm, <coughs> taper towards the elbow, generally be a bit bigger again from the elbow, um, and taper towards the wrist. So there's usually a tapering towards the end of each 
section of a joint. Um, you won't usually get a bulging out unless you've got a particularly unusual figure. Um, and again, this guy, just because he's front on, I might actually just block in so I've done some straight lines for him. And sometimes look a little bit awkward in gesture form, um, just because it can be difficult for more awkward constructions to, to connect them effectively. Just going to get my notes back up. That's it pretty much for the limbs, so we can now move to the head and torso, which pretty much rounds out the, the figure as far as creating a very a sort of intermediate gesture. Um, what we look at next. Yeah, so we'll look at the torso as a set of shoulders and then <clears throat> what happens. Um, torsos vary a bit, so they can sometimes taper in with fairly straight lines or you get kind of, they'll tend to be more articulated. This guy actually has a curve in his gesture, so does he. Um, she's got kind of a curve if you were to straighten out the hips, which often happens. Um, so you'll see here there's this kind of hip girdle. Um, I won't go into that too much today because that's more of a construction rather than a gesture thing, but um, the kind of girdle of her hips kind of sits like that. Um, everyone, all these figures will have something like that going on. Uh, that's basically where the hip bones are, so it's where the torso starts to connect into the into the legs, but you'll tend to get any significant bends in the, the torso will occur quite high up <coughs> around the waist and not around the hips. The hips tend to kind of sit more with what's going on in the legs. Um, so again, with this figure here, the lower part of the torso sits quite solidly, uh, this guy as well. barely see what's going on in the one with him. Um, something like that for his torso. This guy again has these kind of blockier lines till it angles back in up to the, the basically the bottom of the rib cage. Um, <clears throat> so if I go back to this figure you can see her rib cage is actually jutting out through this section here. So the rib cage is there, her spine's kind of bending back and then there's this this hip girdle, which has to draw a sort of construction underneath, sits, kind of spins in, connects over, like that. I don't know if you can quite see that, but then her legs come out of the out of the hip bone, and you got your sort of great great trochanter and femur coming out. Um, the spine's curving back that way, and then her chest is sitting on top. So you get this like extreme flexibility but basically between where the, the rib cage is and where the hips are. There's a lot of movement in the torso. Generally, otherwise, the torso stays fairly rigid, so the lower part of the torso is pretty um, solid. The top half of the torso is quite solid. Obviously, then the, the arms and neck bend out of it. <coughs> um, so seeing as I started doing that, I'm just going to go through and kind of find all of the different uh, hip girdles I suppose you call them. And how they connect into the into the top of the lower leg. So again this guy juts out in a similar sort of way to the other the other straight on figures. Uh, <coughs> he's just got this guy's just got a tiny bit jutting up there. This guy's pretty solid down to there. That's the bend kind of coming into the hip on him. She's jutting out. So that's pretty much all the hip girdles in. So they will tend not to have so much of a curve. There'll be straight lines that you use to articulate them. Um, and you'll find they, they're kind of the, those in the shoulders, 
and parts of the chest will tend to be the kind of rigid sections of the figure. Everything kind of bends around them or kind of bends between those points. Um, so if we now go through, pick out our shoulders, we could probably curve her shoulder from, or her left shoulder from that um, arm over to her other shoulder. This guy has not that much shoulder visible. It's just the top there. This guy's got kind of, his shoulder muscle sits up, but then if we were drawing a line across, it would come down to that other shoulder. This guy's doing something like that. This guy I drew in as his, his main gesture. Um, his kind of angled in as well, but you can get those little bits there. She sits across the top as well. Her shoulder's not too obvious, but it kind of curves back that way. And then this guy's shoulder sits over the top as well. <coughs> um, so we've got shoulders blocked in. Um, the only other kind of gestural thing that then typically occurs is you'll get some kind of curve in the torso. So if we drop down from the shoulder, we've got a C curve here. And there. Um, this figure is pretty much already blocked in. This guy kind of curves back that way and actually he kind of his, his torso sort of curves back but then his shoulder juts out something along those lines. He's got a fairly solid this guy but a slight curve back. Um, she's got a fairly exaggerated curve. The echoes kind of creates almost an S. This guy's back curves, front part of his torso curves. He's got, this one's got a very exaggerated curve in his torso. Again, she kind of curves something along these lines from the shoulder down. And this one, it's quite uh, a sort of a short point there. And then an exaggerated curve out into the chest there. left this one this is she again it's curving that way you'll tend to find there's a sort of contrapostra thing where the torso part top part of the torso will curve opposite to the kind of sense of the lower part of the torso in standing poses so you get this kind of a sweep there and then a sweep back a sweep there and a kind of sweep back this guy's quite stationary she sweeps this way and then the lower part sweeps back um, she sweeps that way and back. She sweeps that way and back. And he's quite stationary as well. Um, it doesn't occur in all figures, but occurs in some. Um, a little bit in this guy as well, actually. His spine is somewhere there and curving back. So the final thing to do with your gesture would be to just block in... Well, it's not necessarily actually the order that you would work, but in terms of what I've been describing... Um, you would sort of block in your head and neck for all the figures. But again, keep it simple. So depending on the shape of the hair and the shape of kind of positioning the face, you'll get different sorts of shapes emerging. But you won't find quite so much gesture. In a figure drawing, the gesture tends to occur across the whole figure. Um, so the head kind of generally conforms to whatever is going on in the gesture rather than being anything too exaggerated outside of it um, but you don't want to basically you don't want to over describe the head um, you just want to block it in I've lost her I've got to do her up around so you might find where the chin is um, on the top of the head the front of the head you usually just make one connected line <coughs> So something, oh that guy's got a hand, something along those lines for the heads. Um, and then you want to block in any hands and feet. Um, usually as sort of, the hands will be some kind of rectangle, and the feet will be a sort of triangle. So usually, this is a good example, but you find the back of the foot, uh, one line for the front of the foot, and then one line, sort of curving line for the 
the bottom. Uh, they can be a little bit tricky feet, but I recommend just trying to stick to about three lines for them. So one, two, three. Again, a triangle for the back of that one. And last of all, um, as I say, we can block in the hands, which generally make kind of quite random shapes. There's some consistency with them. They're less uh, consistent than the feet, typically. Um, so if you look at this one, it's maybe kind of a sort of little sweep, something like that. But generally, I'd recommend just uh, blocking them in. Uh, you don't want to try and do every finger or something like that. <coughs> I'd actually re recommend leaving them fairly blocked in for quite a while throughout the drawing. They're generally a sort of final thing to do. Uh, they usually look a bit better if you just leave them quite simple um, and you just kind of capture the general sense of them. As soon as you start trying to do detail in the fingers it can kind of throw everything off a little bit, or in my experience. So I'd recommend just blocking them like this. So yeah, that pretty much pretty much does it for our gestures. Um, as a sort of subtle little bit of articulation, if there are any gaps in your your gesture where you've lost, uh, I've got a few actually this guy's hand where things don't quite connect, um, you can then go in and add that little bit of detail. But as a general rule, your so there might be um, bits of limbs like knees or elbows that aren't quite. Uh, accurately drawn in. Um, or sections where um, kind of a little bit of detail to make more sense of it. That was a bit of a simplistic set of shoulders for that particular figure. Likewise for this guy. Might make the shoulder a bit clearer. Um, but for the most part The gesture should pretty much capture um, all the major proportional things going on in the figure. Um, yeah, that pretty much does it for what we're looking for for a gesture. So what I recommend as an exercise, I've got this uh, written up and I'll be posting it. Actually, this is a just quickly another little example of where you might add a bit of extra articulation even in the gesture. Um, this guy's legs weren't super clear. Uh, from the gesture, just because they were quite front on and quite bony. So you might go in and start articulating, adding these sort of straight, um, more structural, architectural lines that I call articulating. So basically you're articulating the curves. The idea being that the original curve that you drew um, is where you kind of place your articulations. It gives you a context, a kind of an overall compositional context within within which you can fit um, the specifics of the figure. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, basically as an exercise, I recommend doing this. So printing out, um, finding your own, or just using the, the version that I post up uh, online, which is just the, the set. Um, and producing your own gestures from them um, in this way, so just working over the top. As an extension, um, you could try to do your gestures separately, so kind of like a, a copying exercise. You could have a blank piece of paper and try to copy each figure, either measure or do it by eye, whatever you prefer. Um, <clears throat> but initially I'd recommend for beginners it's good to work over the top, either trace or work directly over the drawing, just because you don't have to worry about getting your proportions right. You can just focus on simplification um, and kind of getting used to drawing your curved lines, that sort of thing, what we were looking at last week. Um, but definitely this is what you will then develop into. These should hopefully be maybe, if you're working in a life drawing class, maybe like a five minute pose to get a pretty accurate um, 
version of a figure take you about five minutes I would say to get something like this down um, if it was then a 30 minute pose you find all the details in the outside contour you start adding shadows um, that's something we'll look at in future At the moment we're just looking at the the outside contour that well originally the gesture and then turning the gesture into something that captures the naturalistic elements of the figure not just that sort of initial abstract interpretation um, I think that covers it for today Um, yeah, I guess the final thing is that this this approach isn't shouldn't just be limited to figure drawing. So you could try to find gestures within still lifes, within landscapes. Um, I talked about this a little bit last week as well. You could do the same thing with an arrangement of objects sitting on top of each other. You'll find certain, or ideally, you will find certain flowing lines that unify unify the composition in some sort of way. Um, and you can do the same thing: articulate things, break them down. When I create my life's, uh, life drawings and paintings, there's, there's a few videos on there, I think, where I do so. You'll see my beginning stages are quite similar to this, so I'm kind of... There's a rhythmic life drawing which follows this sort of idea, uh, working on a, a ram skull. Um, where's ram? A deer skull. <clears throat> uh, where I look at the general curves and then sort of deconstruct, or not deconstruct, but break the, the overall curves down into, um, into the specific articulations and then the shadows. And eventually render it, which is what you would do with a figure drawing. But this sort of approach to drawing is and painting is really useful um, to think about the composition, about flowing lines, thinking about how your lines connect through the image. Um, it'd be something we'll look at in a later lesson as well, um, that sort of compositional aspect. Um, but for now, that pretty much covers how you go about this. So good luck with your own. Um, if you do go to a life drawing class, I hope this helps. Um, if you don't, I recommend uh, joining one. It's a great place to kind of practice these sorts of drawings out and these sorts of techniques. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was good, and I will see you guys next week.